A couple of weeks ago, I posted a reel on Instagram and it was the first time I'd ever worked with REI as a partnership. So they reached out to me and they said, hey Dan, we wanna work with you. Uh, would you make us an Instagram reel? I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I've never worked with REI before. I've never owned anything from REI before. And I said, but if I'm gonna do that, you gotta send me some stuff branded REI because I don't own anything. And I picked out myself on their website, like five things that they sent me. And one of them was this tent here, which is the REI Flash One Air or Flash Air One. <laughs> We'll put it on the screen for you. Okay, so you're probably thinking, Dan, are you being paid for this video right now? Is this a sponsored REI video? And the answer is 100% no. <laughs> I just liked the tent so much. I was so impressed with how this tent has sort of done over the past two weeks sitting in my yard. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I think people should know about this tent. So here it is. Branded stuff from companies just intrigues me in general. Like if you go to any mainstream box store out there, they always seem to have their own brand of whatever it is you're buying. So anything at REI that you can pretty much buy there, it seems like they've got their own version of, including tents. So I was a little skeptical of it. I was a little skeptical of anything purchased from REI that was branded theirs. And I'm not sure if it's just like sort of a white label, like they are just buying from say a Patagonia and then slapping their name on it or whatever, how it works, but skeptical is an understatement. Okay, so I've got one question for you. Is it possible to review a tent that you have never ever slept in? I'm gonna say it is 100% possible. <laughs> because if you sleep in a tent, are you actually reviewing it while you're sleeping? You're just sleeping. So uh, anyway, I never slept in this tent. That's why I'm saying that. But it's been sitting in my yard for two weeks straight. And it has been incredibly diverse weather over those past couple weeks. This tent costs $299 retail. So no sales, no discounts, no discount code, no nothing at all. Just out the door, $299. Now this is the one person and they do have a two person version of this tent as well, which we can put the price up on screen for you. But that would be an expensive tent for most people. But what you're getting out of this tent is actually pretty good for what you're getting, but it's not that expensive of a tent for other tents that are ultralight tents a lot like this one. So this is actually REI's lightest tent. The minimum trail weight is one pound, 12 ounces or one pound, 11.2 ounces without the main pole. If you pack it up, it should weigh about two pounds, 4.6 ounces, but I'm gonna show you what it actually weighs on my scale. If you pack it up, you wanna know how big it is, it's gonna be six inches by 16 inches. The floor dimensions are 88 inches by 35 inches by 27 inches. The floor area is almost 19 square feet. The vestibule area is 8.4 square feet. The peak height on this thing is 42 inches and it's got one door. The tent poles that come with it are a DAC NFL aluminum and the fabric of the canopy is nylon mesh. The floor fabric is a ripstop nylon. There is no included footprint and it is not freestanding. It's just a trekking pole or a single pole tent. So there's four main things that I look for in a tent. I want it to be lightweight. I want it to be packable. I want it to be easy to set up and I want it to be safe when I'm in weather. I think it does take a little bit of a learning curve to set it up, but once you do it, once you you know set it up maybe once or twice, um, it's definitely gonna be a lot easier. It is a little bit finicky with those poles, having to put them in the sleeves and you know set them up and just make sure everything's taut and you know set up correctly. Um, it does take six stakes to set up properly, which isn't a big deal. It's pretty typical for tents like this. As far as ventilation goes, awesome. Uh, the whole tent is completely ventilated around the entire Thing. Got a vent right here uh, that will be propped out with this little tiny little pole here that you can sort of Velcro a lot like other tents on the market. Uh, but that's nice because then that hot air can just sort of vent right out at the top and it's got this little awning here so that the rain doesn't get inside of there. That's uh, a great feature. The zippers in the tent uh, aren't low quality at all. Uh, they stuck maybe once or so when I was zipping and unzipping it up. I like when zippers are nice and free flowing and easy to get in and out of, and I'm not having to like fidget with the fabric, getting stuck in it and that kind of thing, especially like in the middle of the night when you gotta get out in a hurry to use the bathroom or something like that. So zippers, uh, good job. Another thing I really love about uh, tents is when they make all of the corners of the tent adjustable. I think that is just a no brainer. And on this tent, they are all adjustable. So that means then when one uh, end of the tent starts to sag, maybe because it's wet or whatever, you can do that really easily without having to like pull a stake out and move it. The REI did a great job making sure that every corner, every tent stake is 100% adjustable. Check out the inside of the tent. Headroom, obviously when you're sitting here is fine. Um, I've got maybe, I don't know, that far. So maybe six, seven inches of headroom. See so what kind of headroom and footroom we've got. So I'm six feet, two inches tall. And uh, I've got a 25 inch wide sleeping pad. 
78 inches long, so this is the one of the bigger pads that I've got. I've got maybe eight, nine inches for my head here. Now, if I sit up, what's gonna happen? Okay, I'm gonna hit my head here. That's not a big deal. I could just kind of go like that and I'm sitting up. The side of the tent does kind of lean in on me a little bit, but I mean, it's a one person tent. My feet aren't even coming close to touching the bottom. <laughs> Of the ceiling, I mean, of the tent on the end here. Now, this is sort of like a single double wall tent. So what I mean by that is it's got obviously one outdoor wall here and then sort of a double wall between you and the vestibule. So that does help with a little bit of condensation, not a ton, because uh, you're obviously gonna get a lot of condensation here. But it is ventilated really well, or the vestibule and the outside sort of awning around the tent is high enough that I don't see a problem with air being able to get in here at all just to kind of release and come out. The one that I think that I've noticed so far is probably just how, how I've got it pitched is that this center pole is kind of <laughs> bent, but that's probably because I've come out here for the past couple of weeks adjusting this thing. And so it's probably cranking on it a little bit, but as far as roominess, there's not a problem at all. The Ends are color coded, so you know which end is the front end or the back end when you're setting it up. That's really nice. Uh, the tent poles are even, let me see. Yep, the tent poles are colored as well, so you know where to put the tent poles. I also like that they've got uh, these extra pull outs here for if you need to attach some extra guy line to it for if you want to have it a little more storm worthy. But um, yeah, I don't know how necessary that is because this tent did stay up pretty well through several storms this week and did just fine. Um, and then storm coverage is great on this tent. So um, I didn't experience any serious wetness inside of the tent. Some pooling a little bit on the end, but I think that had to do with the, my pitch and how I set it up because this is the first time I set it up and I just left it this way. And the ground back here isn't completely level. So that's part of it. And um, it stayed completely taut uh, for the most part, except when it rained, obviously the nylon sagged and that's completely normal for a tent like this. That's gonna do that. Any nylon tent's gonna do that. You know, all you gotta do is get up Tighten the, the guy lines a little bit around the stakes and you're good to go. Future Dan here. Uh, I've been testing out this tent a ton in the past couple of weeks. It's been raining a ton in the past couple of weeks. So here's some video of me going back in my backyard, testing out this tent in the rain over the past couple of weeks. Now this tent has been sitting out here for probably, I don't know, five days. I've left it out here just to kind of see uh, kind of what it'll do. I've only um, adjusted the guy lines one time on this tent. So uh, if there is sag, it's gonna be because of the rain. Let's open it up and see what's inside from this huge downpour and sitting out here for five days. All right. Wow, not a single drop of water. It doesn't look like anywhere but the corners. Nope, dry as a bone. That's pretty good, I'm impressed. I think I'm gonna leave it sit out here overnight with that water pooled here. Uh, just to kind of see if that's gonna make its way through the nylon at all. and. I was gonna kind of shake it off a little bit and get the water off it, but I think it'd be good to uh, let it sit another night. That water sitting here in the end here is gonna be a good uh, test of basically how much water that nylon can take if it's just pooled up like that. Cause that is something that could happen in the middle of the night when you've got water pooled like that, maybe early on after you've fallen asleep and then by morning it might be dripping through. So uh, let's check it out in the morning. Okay, it is the next day. Uh, the tent has dried pretty well. I don't think it rained at all last night. Um, and then the water here is no longer pooling there. So that's dried or we're gonna find out uh, if it leaked through. Ooh, that looks like it might've gotten through the nylon a little bit, but let's check it out. Uh, that's not at all wet. Not even a little bit wet <clears throat> there. Well, let's open up the main tent here. Yeah, it's totally dry. It's not even close to wet. All right, impressed. Great job, REI. So it's been, I don't know, at least a week. This tent's been sitting out here. It's rained on and off all week. Some storms, some wind. I haven't touched this tent uh, this time anyway. The first time I uh, adjusted like the nylon and things like that. So, okay, this is what I would expect, a saggy tent, so. Let's just see how dry it is on the inside though. Okay, so today it was rain. Ooh, what do we got here? What do we got? A little bit of pooling here, just a tiny bit, tiny bit. But that's from this big puddle here, this bucket of water right here. Oh boy, that's hard to tell how long it's been there, but there is some 
discoloration here. Let's see, the corners, how are they doing? Yeah, there's a little water in the corners, but I'm wondering if that's dripping from that pooling as well. Yeah, definitely some water in the corner here. Okay, at first glance, honestly, that's not bad. For a tent that's been sitting out here all week, I mean, it's it's been raining today for like maybe an hour though. That does concern me a little bit, but there's no pooling on the foot end, at least uh, on the top of the tent, so not the top of the tent that's causing that water to leak in that corner. Okay, now it's, uh, oh gosh, I don't even remember. A day later, two days later? I don't know, this thing's been sitting out here for a long time. And it's been raining now pretty much all day. Okay, so the pooling stopped, strangely enough. But that's, uh, honestly, that's a little strange because I would have thought this would have sagged again and pooled. You know what, maybe it pooled enough and it got heavy and then poured out, I don't know. But let's see. On the inside, oh, you know what? I totally forgot to zip this shut, so I wonder what's living in here. <laughs> okay. Well, but not too bad as far as wetness, though. Honestly, it's really not that bad. Just a couple of wet spots, and it's been raining all day. Look at this. And that's just barely wet. I mean, if I hit, even the corner is a little wet. How's this corner doing? That's dry, actually. I was a little worried about the rain and it getting wet for nothing. All right, let's talk about some of the potential problems I could see with this tent. Um, headroom, it's not the end of the world, but it is a little bit of a problem. I mean, if you're having to you know, wait out a storm or something like that, I would be almost forced to lay down in this thing after a while, and that just could get old. And then also, the loop for the headlamp in the center of the tent is almost completely useless. It is just too small. I had to force the band of my headlamp to fit through it, and I almost didn't even try to put it through all the way because I was afraid I wasn't gonna get my headlamp out because the buckles almost didn't fit through it, and I thought I was gonna have to rip the loop to get it out. So it's needing to be longer. It needs to be a bigger loop. The fact that rain and uh, wetness did get inside of the tent when it sat here in storms, it's not the end of the world. It wasn't a ton, but it is a little bit concerning. So every time it rained, there was small amounts of water that got inside of the tent. Um, and then pooling on the end, I think that was my fault, just having set it up just this first time and not having that end completely taut. But, you know, rain leaking through on a brand new tent like that, it wasn't terrible. I certainly would trust this tent. I would definitely take it, but for 300 bucks, that really shouldn't happen. Here's everything that comes with the tent. It's gonna come with 10 tent stakes, it's gonna come with four extra guidelines, two of the short poles, and then one center pole, and then it's also gonna come with a splint in case one of your poles breaks. So what I would bring is what we're gonna weigh. I'm not gonna weigh everything here. So the specs from REI are really off on their website, on the tag that was on the tent, on reviews. So uh, let's find out what this thing actually weighs. So the tent and the bag that it comes with is already one pound, 11 and a quarter ounces. Now, if we go ahead and add the six tent stakes, obviously six that I used to set it up because these are dirty. Uh, let's throw those on there. Now we're at one pound, almost 14 ounces. If I add the two tent poles, like if you're not gonna bring the main tent pole, maybe you've got a trekking pole, we're almost at two pounds all in. If you add the center pole, like if you don't wanna bring trekking poles with you, it is going to be just over two pounds. And if anybody's wondering uh, if the bag itself added all that extra weight, it weighs one ounce. But this is where I'm really confused. So the details, large door and vestibule packed small at 16 inches long, one pound, six ounces with included pole. I'm totally lost. <laughs> That's super confusing because nothing here seemed to be that lightweight. So I'm not sure how REI is measuring the, that uh, weight. Maybe somebody can help me out in the comments. Even on the website, it is totally wrong. Uh, it's actually closer to what we weighed is what they've got on the website, not this tag that's on the tent itself. So anyways, would I take this tent out on a backpacking trip? Obviously, yes, from what we've talked about. I think it's a great tent, especially the value you get for 300 bucks and that you don't have to have a center pole or you don't have to bring a trekking pole, or if you're not a trekking pole user, you could just bring the center pole. There's a lot of value with adding this pole to this whole setup anyway. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one.